considerably. It can almost like be like a sore muscle. Yeah, uh, that, make, that makes sense. But uh, no, I, I definitely keep throwing people off because it's like on one Facebook group I'm part of that deals with instincts a lot and whatnot. It's like the people who like have really been studying it, they'll be like, yeah, immediately right off the bat, you seem like self-preservation sexual, but there's there's something else. Like, they describe it as almost like a dryness. They say the people who have the sexual energy, like the way they define it is like, I think it's funny because we have our you know, FI thing that we call moisture, but uh, for them it's like sexual lasts, they define it as like having a certain like, and like whether it's like looking at like collages that they make of like pictures or like when they're using descriptive words and like poetry or stuff like that, they'll describe sexual lasts as like having a certain dryness about them. And people who have a sexual preference, they say have like a certain wetness about them. A certain wetness about them? Wetness? Yeah, wetness. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so. So it's been it's been sort of confusing for me, and I feel like I feel like it's sort of driven me to try to better understand it. Which fucking sucks when you got tertiary TI. I mean, I think it's like a you doubt yourself uh, more than like your tertiary TI because you seem to have TI down pretty well. Yeah, I mean, fucking. 469 tri type. I was reading that. It's like 469 tri type is triple doubting. I was like, fuck me. <laughs> it's just like, if I'm given an answer, there's at least three questions that spawn out of that, and I don't have the mental energy to follow all of them. So it's like the OCD tri type, basically. It's, <laughs> I don't know if it's OCD, but it's like, I mean, with nine being in charge, it's like, Oh, let me face my problems. And then I open up the door and there's just like a sea of writhing insects in the room. And I'm like, close no, the door. I'm just gonna turn around and ignore that. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, what was it? Uh Blue Velvet was the name of the David Lynch film? Is that what it is? Blue Velvet? I, I can't remember the exact name, but it's like standing at the uh the uh, white picket fences of Valhalla and looking down at the cathartic writhing mass of insects. <laughs> I'm like, I'm here in my dream castle and there's reality and fuck that, fuck that, fuck that, fuck. I know I switched the, the conversation around. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, boo. Uh, that's uh, okay. I mean, uh, I'm getting... That was my fault. I actually switched. No, no, it's okay. around. I'm getting into Fucking it. Neptune is tearing us I, apart. I gotta, I gotta figure out what your your deep things are like if we're gonna make this work, right? Okay. Oh my god! Let's look, look at your guys' astro chart. <laughs> I mean, I'm uh, curious. I'm, I'm, gonna, gonna, I'm gonna get uh, my last drink, so it's your last opportunity. In the event that I don't feel this way tomorrow, it's your opportunity to get as much uh, out of me as possible. So. I'm feeling really <laughs> sad right now. <laughs> Hey, I, I, I'm feeling optimistic. I think tomorrow, yeah. um, you know, I'll uh, show you my dick. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> wait, hold on. I'm going to get my last drink and take a piss. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm actually, like, way more excited to see his mind than I am his dick. <laughs> Don't tell him that. <laughs> When's your birthday, Ken? February the 28th. Every twenty eighth, night. Yeah, I'm. A, I'm. A, you want me to just send you my my results? Wait. Uh. For well, so there's this site, the Secret Language, and you can like look at uh based on the birth week how compatible you guys are. It's kind of fun. Uh -huh. and it tells you like which famous marriages and relationships uh existed in history with those people at the same week. You're you're gonna man. We're totally like you're gonna you're gonna ruin this with your fucking Secret Language shit. I don't have to tell you guys. I can just like analyze it for myself. You're gonna be like, "Oh yeah, you're looking great for each other." You're just like making like a "do not fucking do it" face. There's always a positive spin to like most of it. Like they don't like doom any relationship ever completely. 
it'll just say what is most likely to happen. Like friendship, marriage, or family, like which is they're compatible yeah. with. I think it's really interesting when I get, you know, like very uh very um I guess logical positivist type people. Who, who like don't believe in um, right? They like don't believe in astrology, or they don't believe in the positioning of the planets that that has any sort of effect. And I don't know it's it's very strange because it's like I understand as an INFJ, there's certain well, factual. Thing. It depends on if the universe is deterministic or not. If it's deterministic, then the positioning of all the states of everything in the universe does have a predictive effect if it's not deterministic and things are inherently probabilistic then the best you could say is like this is what's most likely to happen blah 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 blah. but as far as like extrapolating the position of the planets to like someone's like emotional state or like psyche and like all this kind of kind of stuff seems like a stretch to me but i don't know it's still fun to think about to me but uh so you're 1996 ken five 95 Okay, and your birthday? Mine's uh, September 21st, 1992. I'm sorry, repeat that? September 21st, 1992. Okay, thank you. Reveal relationship. <laughs> uh -oh. Reconciling the material and the spiritual. Why can't I open this? Like, all the others were twist off. What's happening to me? <laughs> I can just link you guys now. This is your relationship. Uh-oh. I feel, I feel scared. <laughs> this might be the end of things. Ken. <laughs> yeah. Ken is the week of beauty, and I think you're the week of spirit, but I can't. Well, I, I was born near the solstice. Does that mean anything? Let's see. This would uh, probably take it down. Like, it wouldn't mention that, but it considers those things. Because it's taking your birth week. And Wait, what this what, what you feel for friendship problematic for marriage oh no <laughs> oh yeah your cusp of beauty and i think and uh ken is weak of spirit maybe well advice for pairing sort out your priorities and find common points of agreement you know uh try to be more forgiving and less judgmental i feel like we've got that covered let's see so then, do you, like, do you want to team up and fuck people? <laughs> oh, yeah. We would have to... The one thing we haven't addressed is, like, we were talking about all the shit we're going to do, but, like, are we going to actually, like, be able to, like, co-motivate, co like... <laughs> yeah, I don't... I don't we, we may have to engage in some, <laughs> some uh, interpersonal alchemy. Well, you know, also, I, I think that's what the magic is for, right? The, the purpose of ritual is to overcome uh, the fact that we wouldn't have motivation, right? <laughs> <laughs> we could just we could just compensate for our deficiencies with a sexually charged magic. I think we can. <laughs> Night. Just say the word if you want me to leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> no. If we were going to do something like that, it would not be with raw room in the room. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm feeling intellectually engaged, which makes me more sexually shy. Really? Yeah. Because then it matters more, and I like I'm more flamboyant when things are just a joke. When it when it's just about sex, yeah. I get that. I hope I didn't say anything too embarrassing tonight. Like tomorrow, there's going to be like a video or something. Nah, I play. I say. <laughs> I say more embarrassing things sober. <laughs> Advice for this pairing: sort out your priorities and find common points of, of agreement. Beware of indolence. Indolence. Yeah, that's that that's avoidance of activity or exertion, laziness. <laughs> <laughs> 
try that, to be more forgiving and less judgmental. Hmm. That's what the magic is for, is for the uh, indolence. <laughs> See, this is where like occultic stuff can be like <laughs> what technically occultic stuff like this doesn't make me uncomfortable really talking about like astrology and stuff yeah you have interesting boundaries about this kind of stuff Neptune. yeah I'm curious like what personal experiences do that but we probably don't want to talk about it it's true although i did open myself up to those questions by being so overtly avoidant of <laughs> occultic things yeah All right, this is your opportunity to ask probing questions while I'm drunk. I'm less reserved. Uh, hmm. <sighs> Cold, hard, refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> well... Yeah, when somebody tells me, okay, I know go. I put the pressure on you. <laughs> then my any shuts down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So much can be said in silence. <laughs> I don't know. I'm happy for conversations like this, like where I can just talk about stuff and I don't feel weird. It's like sometimes I'm so worried about social interaction that I don't get out the vast majority of what I'm trying to say. And even if I talk yeah. for a really long time, it's really frustrating because sometimes I don't even say what I mean for all well, the words. I, I just honestly, say. like just now when you're talking about that stuff, even though I don't, I don't know about like a lot of the terms and stuff, it, it seemed pretty cohesive. Like it seems like you're actually like more relaxed than normal. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> also like a lot less people in the room now and stuff. I I might I might perform well, but that doesn't mean like even if I perform well, I still even if it's not in the moment, like later I'll have sort of neurotic uh, obsessing about oh, stuff. I, I hope tonight you don't have too much of that. It's all good, man. <laughs> I hope not as well. But, uh... <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm still reading this fucking thing. What well, saying here, friendships uh, may be squarely based on a search for truth and knowledge. Sounds pretty on point. Mm. It's also like ambiguous enough that it would be like. <laughs> Don't break my heart. <laughs> yeah, I get what you're saying. Every NT's argument. But the, there is there is an interesting aspect where even if it is ambiguous, it's like what you pick up on is meaningful still. Yeah. The patterns that you resonate with, like in and of itself, are meaningful. Kind of like when people read the tarot and stuff, it's like, you know, yeah, it's all arbitrary, and and basically, like the person reading the cards is is, is effectively just like a mirror for that person but like the thing that's meaningful is like what they pick up from the patterns that emerge and then that helps them like understand like oh actually that's what i was thinking about because i recognize these patterns so yeah. there's there's meaning to that kind of thing i thought it was sort of interesting because i actually had my uh my tarot read um a while back it was actually when eric came to visit in ohio oh. we uh stopped by tarot booth did that. That's really fun. You, you know, and Eric did that together? Yeah. Nice. I have my mom's side of the family is like in Ohio. Yeah. Um was it I uh, I can't remember if he got it as like where he was at. Because the guy did this thing where he was like he, he had one card and said, This is where you're at. 
and like he had a. It's like this is where you were, and this is where you're going, kind of thing. Yeah. Where you you draw three cards essentially. That's like the a, a basic reading, I think. Typically. I think I drew more than that. Okay. Like I drew a lot more. I can't remember if it was. It seemed like it was. I don't know, like seven or more than seven. I can't remember. Hmm. But I. Uh, no. Like how many of them did you turn face up? Well, he turned... All the ones that I drew, he turned face up. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, I think I started... Oh, Neptune's going to be RB. Um, I think I started with like a Three of Swords or something like that. Mm. Um, which had to do with like emotional sort of turmoil in a way. But I... Uh, I always associate like... So this same person that was like... Uh... Um, that I associate with the Morgan, yeah, um, was like obsessed. Like they basically like the f the four suits were like the four elements, right? And like cups was like water, swords was air, and uh, um, oh god, I'm forgetting wands. Uh, sorry, what? Wands. Was it wand? Yeah, I mean, basically it was like, but he associated like uh, like emotional stuff with cups, and so like. Water was like a cup, and had to do with like more with emotion, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Whatever he associated it with fire, though, was more like a, it was like a primal kind of thing. And then the yeah. swords, you know, it, it's like air is kind of like this like intellect. So like yeah. I associated swords with like an intellectual kind of thing, but I don't, I don't know. Like honestly, like this is the thing. Like it is kind of arbitrary. So if to you like the the swords was like emotional turmoil, then like I feel like that's just as valid. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean it was more emotional in the sense of argumentation. It was uh, like debate so. or discourse with people. I see. Interesting. Um so I can't remember for Eric if it was the card that he so yeah. that he was at, or if it was just one of them, but for that one, I think it was like the Emperor or something like that. Uh -huh. <laughs> which I thought was funny for How, how appropriate. <laughs> it's like, because I guess the guy told... He's like, I guess he's the, like, I'm going to be president, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, no, because I, I think the guy told him, he was like, okay, so basically you feel like the king. <laughs> uh, and uh, for me, he said, the place I'm at is the higher fan. Hmm. Hmm. And in the in the mm, in the uh, <laughs> and he was using the mythic tarot, so it was uh, Chiron as the representation of the hierophant. Oh, so, yeah, I've never gotten a reading from someone that wasn't someone that I knew and I had emotional like baggage with. Uh -huh. It'd be interesting to like you know because like plus this person I was with was like kind of a sociopath, so like anything that they were saying about myself was might have been like an effort for them to try and like manipulate me too. So I'm. I'm always this, this dude was he was kind of interesting because he was doing tarot readings but apparently he was like part of like a christian church or something <laughs> he's riding the line <laughs> riding the line but i it's see this is the way i've i've felt like um there's like one of uh like the lyrics from one of like faithless's uh songs like is something about like I see with the right eye and the left, and, and I'm kind of just like thinking about like the right and the left hand path. Like, it's like to I, I'm I'm kind of like reached a point now where it's like I extend my right hand and my left. You know, it's like uh, you you have to like ride that line in order to like function. You know, so but like but like understanding that on an intuitive level, I feel like is like kind of important like yeah i don't know i feel like you're still like you're you're very like left leaning still but yeah left leaning as a reaction to poor right misguided and like, I, right -leaning. i'm on a i'm on a swing like away from like left leaning more to like right leaning but like i'm, I'm like re you know kind of like reaching an equilibrium it's it's weird because yeah. you think about it like sometimes people that associate themselves with the, the left-hand path are actually kind of like fairly decent people. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, that's not what I was going to say. Like more like, uh, 
so you know how like the left the right hand path is like asking for like some power from like something greater than you and then yeah. like the left, left hand taking. is like yeah but like the people that like commune with like an entity right yeah. even if it's like a dark entity they're really doing like um right hand path stuff you know uh -huh. whereas if you if you are kind of just like where you treat you and yourself as like the the only agent that matters you know that's like super hardcore left hand path um yeah i feel like that's harder for me to tap into yeah like that's um i mean because that's the thing that's like most powerful right it's like uh it, it seems that way like oh i'm going to be like the the god entity here but I, I think that like the the concept of like a totalistic like holistic view of 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 things where like well yes like I am I'm God but also I'm like nothing <laughs> you know like kind of is the place you want to be at rather than like limiting yourself to like one ego frame I guess I don't know mm -hmm. yeah. Um... <laughs> Uh, I'd rather try to drill things down to, maybe not drill, but uh, I try to get things closer to what they are rather than trying to start at, oh, I'm God and I'm nothing, you know, like that well, sort of. For me, I had to like reason my way into NI, right? For you, it's like NI. It's, it's a little bit. Yeah. There's a, there's a TI draw there. Yeah, like I, I had I I have to like rationalize <laughs> a little bit. Uh, yeah. I don't know, like I, I'm getting more and more comfortable with it and I, I start to like man, like I, I'm so I'm so like turned on by it, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh I don't know, it's just like this profound sense of like a meaningful kind of power not like not like like oh like i am all powerful like a kind of like uh, you know something that matters it's like instead of the ambiguity that i'm used to with any there's like a sense of like you know yes i can un like i can acknowledge the plurality of truth but at the same time it's like i can still have that sense of like what I'm doing is right, you know, which is kind of like, if I can maintain that, that seems like a pretty good deal. <laughs> yeah, I struggle with uh, the whole feeling like what I'm doing is right. That's interesting to me because it, like as an NI Dom, I would expect like a little bit more certainty about things, but I don't know. Well, I mean, it's it's on a direct axis with SE. Sure. And I feel like being being the vulnerable function for INTPs, SE maybe has a bit more of a antagonistic feel to it. Whereas I think for me, it's more of a completing thing. So it's like as far as the certainty that you're talking about, it can only be gained through experience. What I conjecture with NI, um, like it has to be brought into fruition in some way. And then once it is known experientially, it is understood. So yeah, because for me, I'm coming from this like theoretical framework and it's like once all the pieces come into place, I have this like monumental realization. I'm like really confident about it, but it seems it's, it might just be the way I approach approach NI since it's it's, it's more like I, I feel like the NI SE axis is like going along with life not just experience not not just you know existing for a while and then you know dying and turning to dust but I mean having moments where as you're walking whatever path you're on, you know, you get to peer behind the veil. You get to, you get to catch a glimpse at the unspeakable thing or the ineffable. And 
It's just a sort of knowing that, okay, it's this direction. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah like, I agree. It's not, it's not like a, I guess it's, it's not really like maybe as absolute as a certainty as I've been like expressing. Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't think it's necessarily wrong that you're seeking to express it like that, because I think that is in that. I think that's in line with your, with your ego block. Talk about T I and N E. Yeah. That sort of, I mean, as far as functions go, from what I understand, socionics that seems to be like the sort of gift that you're trying to give to the world. And I think you could probably mix in your demonstrative there to a certain extent. I know in Model G for socionics, Galenko has it set that the dominant and the demonstrative are part of what he calls the mission block, sort of like what you're trying to give to the world, which for... INTPs would be NI, I mean TI and NI. Mm. Is sort of how he would have it ordered. And the, the way he has it ordered, he actually flips it. So rather than having NE being the creative function and NI be the demonstrative, NE becomes the demonstrative function and he has NI labeled as the creative function for INTPs. So he sort of switches that idea around. Yeah. Hmm. Which for. INFJs would be NI and FI. Are you, uh, <laughs> that's a uh, Galenko, G U L E N K O. What are you gonna say? Are you uh Yeah, that's model T. What were you saying, Zach? Alright, I thought you were gonna say something like are you uh that's all awkward silence well yeah I'm, i was waiting for you to finish your sentence <laughs> well I, all i was saying is like i was waiting all <laughs> i heard you say like at the beginning of a sentence and all i was saying is like oh what were you gonna say and then you were saying oh what were you gonna say that <laughs> 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 it was like yeah literally like nothing i guess <laughs> <laughs> No, you hang up. No, you hang up. <laughs> oh, God. Neptune's, like, going to start shipping us now. Yeah. <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> I'd read it. Like, actually, I'm not kidding. Send me a copy. I'll read that. To his membrane. <laughs> oh. His member. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are talking about. I only ever jack off with my membrane. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you have that picture of your accordion dick? I want to see it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do you the favor waiting till you're sober. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. You wouldn't want to do that um, like this. You might feel dirty. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want the reaction the next day of you being like, "Wow, I regret this." <laughs> See, when you, like boy when you say his boy pussy is all white, it just sounds like he has diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like. Boy pussies don't get wet like that. I mean, you know. It, it, they shouldn't. <laughs> gotta be clean them properly. Yeah. Gotta use uh, appropriate cleansing techniques for our extreme anal play. and It's inevitable. 
<laughs> Neptune just likes cleaning himself. Doesn't even fuck. He's just like cleanliness is next to godliness. <laughs> He, uh, he keeps it clean for Jesus. Right. So the Holy Ghost can penetrate him in his sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go. <laughs> oh my gosh. Blasphemous. See, I can't tell if he's actually leaving. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. We won't talk about that then. I'm, I'm just teasing Neptune. Man. <laughs> no, I was I was kidding. I mean, uh, people can make like I would never make a joke like that. But <laughs> other people are free to make that joke. You're like, I'm not going to hell, but you can go. <laughs> <laughs> <Basically. laughs> uh, yeah, when when I got back into Christianity, like uh, I think just about almost getting close to two years ago. It's like a year and a half ago is when I got back into it. Um, and that was short-lived. But uh, when it was, I started listening to people talk about stuff. It's like I started remembering things that I didn't like remember from stories when I was a kid. And I was like, you know, Christian theology is pretty fucking gay. <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> like, it's just... Okay, people, be very careful about who you have sex with. And then there's just, just very, just very sexual imagery. I feel like people have gotten so ca caught up with be behavior that they've forgotten, like the purpose of like spirituality. I guess like people have gotten really caught up with like conduct. Yeah, stuff, you know, like the exact thing that it advocates against. People are like, let's get really concerned with that. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's weird. There's so many, like, uh, um, like built-in contradictions. But sometimes it's like, for example, like you look at, like, Zen, and it's, like, all about the contradictions, you know? So part of me wonders if it's, like, uh, perhaps, like, for some of the, you know, the more deeply invested theologians, right, that it's, like, this this puzzle of contradictions that needs to be, like... Like, that's the purpose of it, maybe, you know? Yeah, one, one annoying thing is when you get people that are like, it's full of contradictions. And I'm like, do you motherfuckers not get spirituality? <laughs> it's like, if you're not confused, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> right. I, I kind of feel like it does a, a, like appeal to an eye a bit more in that way. When it's when it's more willing to be contradictory or just haz hazy in a way. Yeah, like I really noticed that. Like when I was trying to argue like and something I've come to the conclusion with it via NI, I like notice as I'm like explaining it, it's like, you know, this is laden with a bunch of contradictions, but it's kind of like the exploration of those contradictions like proves the point I'm making. It's like self-enclosed kind of. It's like. It's very, it's very like non-linear, which is like a weird concept to me, based on like how I typically think about things, pre, pre and I. <laughs> <laughs> Back when you were the uh, the artist formerly known as Zach. Sure. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah, I can, I can say with with Domina and I combined with fucking Polar TE um I have like this worry that I'm not contributing enough. Like, as far as super ego goes, I'm concerned that, like, yeah, as I said, I'm not contributing enough. It's like, if if I don't have enough going on for me in terms of, like, ambition 
or like work or stuff like that, then it can very easily ruin and like sour every other experience. Huh. Yeah, I get that too. Like, that's why I'm so attached to this. Um, pursuing this, I you know, idea, yeah. the enzyme and stuff. You know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, I also like, I, I look at like Spacey and stuff like. Uh, I know exactly how he feels because that's how I feel all the time. You know, <laughs> like until until I kind of. Uh, like even when I had that you know realization that I talk about like about what I wanted to do like the thing about me like the enzyme thing w was only something new that I realized and it was like finally I could see like the points that I, that I would have to connect in order to make this thing I want to have happen uh -huh. but like previous to that like I know exactly like the kind of like dread that he was expressing like that that feeling was like so you know, it was like, I, I, I can't give any other advice other than, like, you know, hopefully you'll stumble across something that, that suddenly, like, sparks your drive, you know, like, to yeah. to actually, like, understand, like, this is how it's connected, you know? Because, like, I noticed that, like, he definitely has, like, desires. He's like, I don't have, you know, I don't, I don't have any aims and everything. I was like, do you want to explore the universe? And he's like, fuck yeah, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yes, you have aims and stuff. It's just that the the path to getting there there's like so many different paths that like until you see one that's like super super viable you know it's like there are no options and it's like a lot of existential dread that can be associated with that sense of like what can, what do i do next where do i go from here yeah This has been a very weird uh, drinking night for me. <laughs> well, I don't know how, how to respond to that. No, it's been like, it's it's weird, like in a, there's been lots of like, it's been like really sexually charged on one hand, but on the other <laughs> hand, it's been like really introspective and like, uh, like more honest than I usually am. Like I, I've oh. been pretty, I've been pretty honest on this platform, honestly, like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. uh, but like especially well I mean between the sexually charged and intellectual stuff I mean that's how I work I'll leave your, I'll leave your brain quaking baby <laughs> <laughs> nah. yeah I mean I was feeling kind of bummed out today honestly when I got up and it's like after after being able to actually talk about stuff that matters to me, like in this capacity, like I, I feel better. It's like, it's like I did something. Pros prospects look good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like honestly, like even even if, you know, we don't get married or whatever, <laughs> definitely uh, pursue this relationship by other means mm -hmm. in terms of like, it's just good to have people to like be more honest with and open. And right. it's kind of weird. Like this, this sexual window is like opened that for you. <laughs> <laughs> and for me as well, I suppose. It's funny. Yeah, it's funny. I'll, I'll be sort of like hit or miss on that stuff. Like I'll have windows and then, doubt sort of makes me back off because I'm trying to like reorient myself. Like once I start getting like heavily involved in just feelings about stuff. Well, I hope you don't withdraw too much after this. I'll try not to like, even, <laughs> if, even if it's not like, you know, it's not like super serious. Right. But uh. <laughs> Well, I find that it, it's uh, the offset with, um, a lot of intellectual discussion about stuff. I feel like I feel like when things aren't I'm not just saying like, you know, just random intellectual discussion, like let's talk about this today. It's like I mean it's it's sort of intellectual, but there's also an emotional component where it's like um Yeah. It's kinda of weird because like once we both started like it, it was you know, kinda of like a joke at first, but it, in a way it's like 
by acknowledging that side of it, it like opened up like a, a deeper uh, Narr or not narrative, a uh, deeper dialogue. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like it's like a it's like a little boundary that like most people won't cross, and so right. they can't be like uh, fully honest about their uh, the full picture, I guess. Yeah. The, all the all the emotional content that's associated with a certain idea and, or the intuitive content or whatever you know it's, like, mm -hmm. it's more compartmentalized when you are wearing like little masks uh, to hide certain parts of things that you feel like you might be judged for like exposing etc yeah <laughs> Your skin comes off too. <laughs> well, that's why you uh that's why you don't leave your, your exfoliant on. <laughs> leave it on too long it clings. You have to scrape it off. I can't tell if this fluttery feeling in my stomach is true love or I'm about to vomit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't both have the same effect. <laughs> I just knew since the first day I met you. <laughs> oh yeah, I should probably drink some more water. No, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm not on the verge of vomiting. I was just making a joke. You know what? I'm not on the verge of vomiting. I was just okay. making a joke. <laughs> uh. What kind of underwear do you like to wear? <laughs> <laughs> uh, they they gotta be they gotta be like boxer briefs, pretty much. Yeah, I prefer I, boxer briefs. The other I, one, like, I, go ahead. Uh, no man thongs. No man thongs. <laughs> no, they they gotta they gotta have a grip around the thighs because if they don't, like, if they don't have the you know shorts part of it, then shit rides up. Yeah, like on occasion, like I, I've been like, you know, unnecessarily horny and like ordered underwear and shit online that I was like, oh yeah, that'd be hot. And then like I try and wear them. I'm like, this is fucking awful. <laughs> like, let me give you an example. Hold on, I'll show you. And here you thought you were going to need porn tonight, Neptune. All right, here's two really good examples that, like, online, I was like, oh, yeah, that's hot. But when I try and wear them, I'm like, what the fuck is this? This is, like, so uncomfortable. So this one, it has, like, a fucking zipper. That's already a no-no because, like, <laughs> I have a hard time, like, you know, shaving my pubes and shit. Like, look at this. Right. Yeah, that's... No. Like, like uh -huh. and, and plus it, like, rides up. I feel like I would have to be, like, super, super thin, like, twink to, like, wear this shit. Like, I don't know. I can't handle that. And then it's like an odd mixture of like kinky and grandma panties. <laughs> yeah, it, like it just didn't. It looks so much better online. There, there's this one that has like lace and shit on it. Uh -huh. It also has like a matching uh, like top that it was like I don't know why I thought it, it just so much work. Like plus, if you're wearing these in a sexual encounter, someone's like, I, I gotta fucking like untie your underwear. Like what the fuck. Um, it's just all around just like poor choices. Like I never wear these. I just like have them. You're just like, well, I decided to wear these underwear because since I'm so slutty, I wanted some part of me to be hard to get. <laughs> yeah. There was one time though, my mom came to my room and it was like messy. Like when I was in college and she was like trying to like put away my laundry and stuff. He's like, I put your fancy underwear in the drawer. And I was like, uh, <laughs> okay. Thanks mom. <laughs> Oh, shit. I made up this bullshit thing about, like, yeah, don't you know about, like, uh, dress underwear? It's, like, all the rage now. Like, you know, if you're going to, a, like, a nice event, you gotta have, like, dress underwear. I was, like, you know, my parents are pretty old. They're, like, my dad, like, they're, like, you know, 65 or whatever. So I, was, <laughs> I could kind of swing it. <laughs> yeah, I do like Susanna did. She sold, she sold socks to a German guy. 
Uh, <laughs> she sold socks to him, and she, he like tried to get her to sell him a bottle of her piss, and he wanted to drink it. Uh, and she did not agree to that. One time when I was in high school, like I, I was talking with this guy like on the internet and he was like send me pictures of you pissing in your mouth and like i did it and fucking it was disgusting like the taste of piss is fucking gross like i was like oh, jesus christ like, was, like at least i got that fetish out of the way <laughs> <laughs> just just interesting that's something I probably shouldn't have said on this. <laughs> I won't judge you. It's just a, very entertaining. It was genuinely interesting. I, I've been I've been drunk on here before. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. So boxer briefs. That's cool. So, uh, what size pants do you wear? Just trying to think now. Um, like. 38 by 32 is that right maybe i don't know i think i think by doing wait what's your height uh about six one okay i feel like if if we were doing yoga on a regular basis we could basically like share all our clothes like that's a big de- that's a big deal actually because <laughs> like i'm 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 right now i'm, I'm like kind of super skinny because i've been like starving and like debt as a college student um, <laughs> but if I wasn't starving, I would probably be a 38. Like right now I'm, I'm like a 34 or whatever, but I'm basically like all bone, you know? It's like yeah. My, my, uh, oh, there you go. <laughs> my, uh, my inner spirit animal is a fat ass. So yeah, that's how I feel too. I was like, thank, thank God I'm like starving. Otherwise, no, Ned, Ned, wants to, <laughs> Ned wants to see your scarab. He missed oh. your scarab last time. Hold on. I got to hide my chub. <laughs> it, it it healed like poorly so the thing is that i made a terrible mistake like the day after i got this i went to a club and like i got stranded in in town and like the next day like i had to catch like a bus like a greyhound bus to, like get back home and i didn't have my lotion and shit and so it like started blistering up that's why this part didn't heal very well the rest looks okay. Like you could easily get that touched up though. And it'd be yeah, fun. yeah. Someday when I have a little bit more money, I'll have somebody uh, touch it up, and maybe that'll also repair my relationship with Set. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's complicated. Neptune feels the same way about his crucifix tramp stamp. <laughs> I covered that up years ago. <laughs> My favorite are uh, Tramp Stamp Bible verses. <laughs> See, this whole self, con- you know, self contradictory thing. You know, it's, yeah. it's like, women must be submissive on your lower back. <laughs> <laughs> women must be submissive. Is that in the Bible? <laughs> like, if you're a if you're a girl, like, uh, yeah, no. Uh, it says that uh, women should be, sub- or wives must be submissive to their husbands. I wonder what it's like in Hebrew, if it's like still has that vibe. Is this old? I think it's probably or? fairly similar. Like women. Is this old? Their husbands. New Testament stuff. Like honestly, like I need to go through and and fucking very carefully read through all this shit. And, like, I need to at least like read through the bible carefully like i've only read like ex- excerpts and stuff i ought to it's a long fucking book yeah. you know what's fun for ni uh well actually it's kind of torturous <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. uh, you sold me <laughs> so there's this site called uh of your if you like believe in whatever and then you also believe in chance then there's this site where you can just like click uh like get scripture and it gives you a random scripture from the bible and then you're like whoa what is god saying to me <laughs> and you have to like fit it into whatever circumstance in your life that's your way of communing with god uh just like seeing what 
the random number generator creates for you. <laughs> your eye rolled like this. Your eyes rolled so far on the back of your head. When I, <laughs> Sorry. That. I can't I can't hide it when I'm drunk. I just uh... <laughs> You don't get me back. <laughs> Part of it is just like so here's the deal, like I grew up like my parents didn't want to like push pressure like anything on me. Like they didn't have me circumcised, like they didn't have like they didn't do like a bunch of like religious shit. My dad's like a Lutheran, but like we never like really went to church and stuff. They always felt like that my life should be like my choice, I guess. And so they, they didn't like try and put a lot of pressure on me. So I don't I don't have like inclinations particularly one way or the other, I guess. Um, my life choice. <laughs> yeah. But also, I haven't been tainted, you know. Just so you know, no circumcision. I'm I'm still intact, so can get that to look forward to. <laughs> I've never seen one IRL. Really? Well, I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't like mind showing you at all, but honestly, like not in the raw room. Like that's <laughs> that's just gonna create drama. <laughs> gonna create our videos being taken down from. The <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure our account it. being suspended. Plus, I wouldn't want to show you now because it's like dripping in pre-com. Like, clearly. I wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't like showing <laughs> your like. That was not why I said that. Uh, Ken's like. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, I kind of zoned out. Um, no, you guys were mentioning Bible stuff, and uh, kind of reminded me of this one guy I used to listen to. Um, Sort of reminded me of like NI sort of related stuff. And this guy was talking about a, a particular reading of some Old Testament scripture and whatnot. And he was talking about how like there was like a almost POV uh, sort of writing. And so it was like from the point of view like of wisdom is the wisdom, uh, like we're an entity. And uh, it's like talking about how, like, in, in, in order for, like a bit, I'm, you know, I'm heavily paraphrasing, but uh, it's like more or less how God had to, you know, travail or, you know, basically uh, suffer pain in a way for wisdom to be brought about. And uh, it was sort of interesting because I, I think a lot of times, a lot of current narratives is that, you know, God's this sort of entity that just sort of brings things into existence and, you know, just pop this up here and pop this up there and stuff like that. And this guy was sort of coming at it from the perspective that, no, that just like we would struggle with something uh, like this, you know, entity that we would refer to as God struggles with things. However, uh, you know, essentially you're, you're dealing with an entity that despite struggling with things that we can't even comprehend uh, is incapable of failing not because of you know you know cheating or you know taking the easier path but because it's just not in him or something like that to fail i got you um, it, 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 well it could also be just like a thing like you know why would it be a failure it, like wouldn't anything be just as meaningful as anything else? you know like <laughs> how at that point how could anything be a failure right well i guess i'm a, i'm inter interpreting it through the feeler oriented in islands which is more inspirational sort of thing um but then also uh, some other aspect to it um yeah, I guess to me, it sort of painted this picture like that combined with like some other stuff I was listening to it, like painted this picture of, you know, you get a lot of people wondering, you know, like, why is there suffering? Why does all this shit keep going on or stuff like that? Um, and it's like, to me, it seemed to paint this picture that from our perspective, things may seem vain, but none of it is... Like, it, it seemed like it was advocating the notion that, like, nothing was in vain and that struggling did have some sort of a purpose. And, well, it, know, it, it just, through, I, I think, through, the, due to, through the struggle comes comes knowledge and, like, 
ex experience and it's like if you didn't struggle at all you know you, it, like it, it all comes back to if you didn't have that if you didn't have division if you didn't have polarization and like everything was truly one um and all encompassing like there's nothing interesting going on like nothing has meaning it's all just ambiguous nonsense you know so I don't know. Do you get what I'm saying? Like you, you mm -hmm. have to, you have to have this like pain and division and all this other stuff because like otherwise things like don't have meaning. You know, and we're focusing kind of like on the negative stuff. Like I don't know, all, all of it is like equally, you know, meaningful. But when you have something that's like, uh, you know, it, this this is kind of like the way Alan Watts gets at this is like God basically was like hella bored. If you know everything, right? Like what kind of existence is that? You know? Mm -hmm. So it's like he fractured himself in order to um, actually, you know, have some fun, you know, to play this yeah. game and, 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 and have some meaning to things like, or, or like, it's like the, the also the sense of like, you can, Cover it through the discourse of conflict and, and like all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously he frames it in such a way where it's like this intentionary thing. It's like I intentionally split myself up and like, you know. But that's just like his way of phrasing it. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, another way somebody might look at it is almost like how we view instincts, where it was like a almost chemical or like libido reaction. Okay. Yeah, it's like. That, that thing that drove, you know, it's like, you know, life, like the unfolding of things, like things are always like moving toward this goal, like, or, you know, some end, then like no one knows like what it is necessarily. It's like, <laughs> uh -huh. I'm kind of rambling a little bit right now. Well, I think what's funny is like, obviously the example I'm about to give is, you know, heavily sort of filtered through a, a sort of darker lens, but uh, there's a movie called Begotten. It's basically a silent film uh, that was, you know, more or less like a almost like a dystopian horror sort of thing. But um, <laughs> the the beginning of the movie is basically uh, a character who's supposed to represent God is in a shack in the middle of the woods and is uh, sort of very frantically disemboweling himself with a straight razor. <laughs> And uh, it's sort of what I'm speaking about when I talk about like the sort of libido sort of reaction. It like it very much had the like look of a sort of like a reactivity sort of thing. Like it, it was just sort of like well, reaction, as I said. But um, and I, I, obviously, as I said, that's heavily filtered through like a darker lens. But that's I think if you remove the sort of Suicidal murder, you know. Yeah, where yeah. you, you where, where more as a symbol. Like, don't think of it as like your yeah. friend killing themselves. Like, yeah. <laughs> right? I understand. Um, By the way, is this weird when I like look into the camera? I've like started doing that because it's like you want to look someone in the eyes, but like it's like. <laughs> I uh, no, it's 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 good. <laughs> okay. I look away more often now, but especially when I was starting out with TWFP, I actually made it a point to look into the camera a lot more. Oh. Yeah. I've been, like, just, you know, because it's, it, I'm always, like, looking at a place on the screen, but, like, since there's no one else, like, in here other than me, like, it feels awkward to look at myself when I'm talking to you, so I just kind <laughs> <laughs> You're good. <laughs> um... There's a, there's something else about that stuff. Um, yeah. Um, I guess you, you're talking about like the meaning things and whatnot. Uh, I guess for me, when I think about like my own, like well, when I think about you know philosophy or like theology or different things like that, what I'm finding is that there are specific things which I respond well to like the, the stuff I had been mentioning prior and like how I said, it was like sort of feeling filtered. And I, um, I feel like the notion that, uh, existence is sort of, 
it's sort of as far as like me advocating